and welcome to Africa Speak Some Joy during Bira. Today we speak to Ugandans on the anti-gay bill. But before that, let's take a look at Web City. At least 15 people were killed on Friday in an attack on the Somali presidential compound where a car bomb exploded through the presidential gate while Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed was unharmed in the assault on the heavily fortified compound which also houses other government agencies, the attackers are said to have been wearing uniforms similar to Somalia's presidential guards. Among those killed were the chief of staff of the prime minister, a former chief of intelligence and six militants. Somali capital Mogadishu has in the past few weeks been hit by suicide bomb attacks claimed by Al-Shabaab. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe turned 90 this week and in Zimbabwe the weekend is well set for birthday celebrations of Africa's oldest leader. Mugabe, who has led Zimbabwe since independence in 1980, is serving a seventh term after a victorious presidential election in 2013. Through his leadership, Zimbabwe has faced sanctions from the West that have affected the economic growth of the Southern African country. The 90-year-old has, however, shown little patience for the Western countries too. Now, in 10 years' time, Robert Mugabe will be a century old. And I think that's, that's the oldest that anyone can get, uh, especially in Africa with our life expectancy. Plus, there is a car that has been manufactured in Kenya. And let's focus on that on Click. On Click, we share cartoonist Gamza's reflection of Robert Mugabe's 33 years in power. The irony of Robert Mugabe not thinking of retirement makes it seem like retirement could be thinking of him too, especially now that he is rumored to be in Singapore seeking medical treatment. And still on click, we share images of what seems to be the first car to be manufactured in Kenya. It costs less than 10,000 US dollars and has about a 1.6 NA engine it's made in Kenya. It seems to be attracting more attention than what we actually thought. And uh, in case you've been wondering, this is a car called the Mobius. And the Mobius seems to be the latest entrant weighing about 1,200 kgs into the Kenyan market and is to be launched in June 2014 on just about how much it's meant to cost on the Kenyan market. We can only wait for the launch but in the world of engineering this is a step in the right direction for kenya and africa well there we go that's that's a great initiative for kenya and we're all looking forward to the launch of this mobius car by mobius motors in kenya now on to the subject of today which is the anti-gay bill in uganda president yuri museveni is asking the U.S. to advise Uganda scientists about homosexuality as he considers whether to sign a bill uh, or a law increasing the punishments on uh, homosexual acts in the country. The president says he will not sign the law until he's received the scientific advice. Now, last week, Museveni said he had decided to sign the anti-homosexuality bill which parliament has passed. But the U.S., being one of Uganda's largest aid donors, has warned that enacting the bill would complicate relations between the two countries. And President Barack Obama described it as an affront and a danger to Uganda's gay community. And now joining me live via Skype is Sean Chimuli, who is a multimedia practitioner in Uganda with about seven years experience. And so he understands the Ugandan audience. He understands uh, just how much Ugandans react to uh, the issue on homosexuality. Sean, thank you so much for joining us on Africa Speaks. Uh, it's such an honor to have you. Um, I'll start by asking you, would you say Ugandans are a homophobic nation? Personally, I wouldn't like to put it that way. And uh, before I proceed, I'll say that's not again. And thank you very much for this opportunity. But I wouldn't say that Ugandans are a homophobic nation or country, but Ugandans are conservatives who would love many a times to do or protect what they believe in 
and also put away what they don't believe in. So many times, many people would interpret it that way, that they are homophobic. But I, I don't think they are exactly homophobic. Because there are so many individuals who would walk on the street, and they know that their friends are gay, but all they care about is not having them express themselves publicly as being gay. Right. And um, when you say that, you know, the first time that this bill was tabled in Parliament, that was in 2009, you know, there, there was an uproar from the Western leaders or the Western world, if you would put it that way. But, you know, Ugandans seem to be resilient when, they met, when they've made up their minds, uh, they've made up their minds for good. And that seems to be the same attitude that Ugandan leaders are having. But how is that playing out on the audience, especially knowing that some of um, the gay community are being maltreated by a few factions in Uganda. Actually, that is a misconception. One way or the other, there, there are certain images that have been put out on the international community mm -hmm. with so many accusations that Ugandans down here in actual sense are torturing gay people. The, the question is, where are they? Mm -hmm. The gay people are somewhere, and no one bothers to go and look out for them because. The, the relationship that one would like to have with someone might okay, might not exactly affect them if they are not trying to impose their being gay mm -hmm. to people they know, to family or friends. If you're, if you're trying to be gay, be gay by yourself. Don't try being gay in my community, in the school where I take my child. So I, I not necessarily, one thing that I would personally would like to say strongly is that Ugandans are not out on the street looking for gay people to beat them up. Yes. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. Uh -huh. But if you the street and express yourself in a way that you're being gay, there's a possibility. You're going to make so many people uncomfortable. And there is a possibility, mm -hmm. there's a possible, slim possibility that someone might come on you strongly. Well, um, so just put it clear so that whoever is watching at this moment can actually know that it's it's not something that is way out of line that, you know, Ugandans are homophobic to a point. They murder, uh, murder, I would call it, or put it in quotes, they murder all people who are, identify themselves as gay. I think that is the point where Ugandans need to set the record straight. Does it get to a point where people are murdered? Does it get to a point where people are maltreated? Does it get to a point where people are denied services or basic services, for instance? Mm. It, 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 it doesn't get to that point because when you come to my store, you, you do not exactly tell me that I am gay, can I please buy sugar? And uh, if I told anyone to, uh, who is gay in Uganda tries to use that as a passport, then they're going to have a problem. That's when we can be able to analyze mm -hmm. that yes, gay people are being discriminated in the country just because they are gay. Now, to uh, the other part where you're saying that we need to put out a proper impression out there, how are people in Uganda relating with the gay people? Mm -hmm. When I walk into a club, there's a possibility I can be able to tell that that individual is gay. Do I want them to be my friend? Do I isolate them? It depends on how I feel. People have this freedom. And then at the same time, when you get back to uh, people who I would say are very conservative, this is a line that comes with our parents and then uh, uh, people who would like to see us grow into proper citizens. It becomes a little bit difficult. They, they, they will talk about a child who they think is compromising right. their sexuality. They will talk about them in community. They will talk about them. They will talk to the elders and say, I think there is a problem with that child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to wait somewhere in the city center to beat them up. They're not going to do that. Well, that's right. Well, thank you so much, Sean. I, I do appreciate uh, the views expressed, especially knowing that you come from the media uh, point of view. Now, last week we did, or during the course of the week, we did see a number of Kenyan members of parliament as well backing President Yerim Museveni and saying, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the morals of the society. And if our leaders cannot control the morals of society, then we're getting something wrong. And just take a look at what some of the Kenyan members of parliament had to say in this story. Kenyan legislators have criticized the laxity police has shown in arresting the gay community openly demonstrating on the streets. The lawmakers are bitter about what they call a daring promotion of gay activities in Kenya. In a penal code and the act that anybody who found is, is entitled for imprisonment for not less than 14 years. So 
you fail to understand why these things are happening in Kenya and our government is keeping quiet. We are saying no. Because gazing is not African. It's against our culture, against our tradition, against all the religious belief. Last weekend, U.S. President Barack Obama warned the Ugandan President Yuri Museveni that he risked souring relations with the United States if he signed the anti-gay bill into law. But President Museveni is now being backed by Kenyan legislators who have told him not to give in to the pressure from the United States. We are very happy. It is his right. It is uh, the right of that country to come up with such laws. And we want to tell Obama to back away. And in fact, on that account, Obama is not even welcome in Kenya. President Museveni, who in a letter earlier declined to assent to the anti-gay bill passed by his parliament, reversed his decision after 14 scientists made a presentation to him at a recent caucus of his NRM party. He now says he will sign the bill but has not put a date to it. Normal people with abnormal behavior. Now, if the authorities here give me they are signed statements. My historical job is finished. I will sign the bill. If President Museveni signs the anti-homosexuality bill that was first tabled in 2009, homosexual acts will be punishable with a death penalty. And the legislators there say they are being lenient to the gay people there. Of course we've said we are tolerant. That's what we're saying. We are not slaughtering them. That's what we're saying. Let them come and we help them to come out of this unfortunate situation. In January, Nigeria's president, Goodluck Jonathan, outlawed gay marriage, public displays of same-sex relationships, and belonging to gay groups with the passing of a law that attracts a 14-year jail sentence. Anti-gay laws across Africa have since drawn a firestorm of criticism from rights groups. <laughs> Well, there we go. Opinions from Uganda, very conservative, just like Sean uh, Chimuli put it. Now, if you look through the tweets that are coming through, um, Mwinzi Joseph is saying, Museveni should not allow the damn behavior. Why should we be alienates of the Western world? And we're also having one that's coming in here from uh, Mwinzi Joseph again, who is saying we are at a point where Africa needs to make decisions for herself and not bend law uh, for people to make decisions for us. We're using the hashtag Africa Speaks in case you want to contribute to the show. We're talking about the anti-gay laws, not just in Uganda, but across Africa. We all know that just recently, um, President Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria as well did, uh, you know, assent to the anti-gay marriage bill that was passed into law. And now it attracts 14 years in jail. If you actually reported to the authorities in Nigeria and found out to be gay, that attracts 14-year jail sentence. And that is almost, you know, like life imprisonment. By the time you spend 14 years in jail in Africa, that's quite a long time. And uh, looking at more of your opinion coming through uh, Facebook, we're having Bran who is saying, Africa is at a point where we cannot separate ourselves from the West because they have penetrated our world quite a bit too much and it's too hard for us right now uh, to you know say we can decide everything by ourselves we're also having one that's coming in from the African forum where they're saying um, Africans need to realize that homosexuality was in Africa before time memorial well now joining us is the Uganda Law Society Secretary General that is Nicholas Opil uh, Nicholas, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on Africa Speaks. Now, from the legal point of view, what do you make out of President Yuri Museveni's decisions at the moment? Uh, well, as far as we know, uh, President Museveni has not yet signed the bill into law. Uh, legally speaking, he has until Sunday, mm -hmm. tomorrow, to sign up to the law. But when and if he signs to the law, in my view, I think that the law in Uganda is a serious threat to uh, human rights, both for sexual minorities, but also for human rights defenders 
who are engaged in human rights work. It is also a serious threat, in my view, to media freedoms and the freedom of expression. Let me explain the details. First, our constitution is very clear about discrimination. It says that nobody should be discriminated on the basis of sex, race, color, etc., etc. So to discriminate against people merely on the basis of their sexual orientation mm -hmm. or gender identity would be in violation of the cardinal principle of our constitution. Secondly, the bill, uh, in my view, is unenforceable in as far as it seeks to enforce actions or activities between individuals and their privacy. But when you say the bill, um, can you put specifics to some of these clauses that uh, the, the legal society seems to have against the bill at the moment? Well, first of all, these are my positions, not mm -hmm. those of the law society. Mm -hmm. uh, but the particular clauses in the bill we have problems with, first, is the definition of what amounts to homosexuality. Uh, the definition in clause 2 of the act of the bill provides that even just touching a member of the opposite sex in a way that suggests uh, intimacy would be uh, an offense that is construed to be sexuality. So a man holding a man's hand, a girl holding a girl's hand, mm -hmm. a lady hugging a lady perhaps in an intimate manner might be construed to be homosexuality. That's extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now, in clause four and clause five, it provides for the offense of promotion of, of homosexuality. So right. That anybody who is engaged in discussions, debates, that would otherwise be seen as promoting rights of sexual minorities could be deemed to be committing the offense of homosexuality and would be uh, liable to suffer imprisonment for seven years. Even discussions such as this that we are having might be construed to be promoting homosexuality mm -hmm. and that the person easily suffer imprisonment for just discussing it in public. Okay. So, more um, when you say for just discussing it, it could also attract something. Um, do you, are you trying to say that in Uganda right now it is not deemed appropriate to discuss an, such an issue in the media, maybe on television or radio? No. Not, not, not at all. I mean, right now, it's discussions have been very free about the subject, mm -hmm. both on radio and on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, there are homosexual organizations that are based in Kampala. They are not formally registered, but, but, but they operate in, in the country. There are sexual minorities who have been interviewed by the press. And all of that will change if this bill comes, becomes an act because it will become a promotion mm -hmm. to be construed as promotion and that might be uh, a criminal offense uh, once the, the law becomes becomes law and let me make this point that i think is even more important yes is the question of access to health services mm -hmm. all of us know that uh, sexual minorities have serious health concerns if this is passed into law they will not have access to medical facilities mm -hmm because they will be deemed to be committing something unlawful, and therefore medical workers will turn them away. Turn them away. Right. And, and, and I think that that is going to be serious concern. Great. And when, you, when, when, if I'm trying to get the message from you at the moment, is that right now um, the, the gay community in Uganda is not really having the best of time when it comes to access to uh, health facilities, for instance, and they're not being given as much of their human rights as, it, as is expected? Is that the message I'm getting from you? Well, the message is that uh, right now they have serious concerns. They have people turning them away, landlords closing their houses, mm -hmm. uh, people being you know, uh, rejected by their families. And so once the law is then passed, this will even become worse in the sense that uh, there will be a legal justification for doing what right now is just homophobia, but, but will become lawful once this bill is made law. Right. Um, and you put it that the president has up until Sunday uh, to either sign this, uh, this bill into law. What happens if he doesn't sign it after Sunday? What happens then? The provisions of Article 91 are very clear mm -hmm. that the president 
uh, must sign this into law in 30 days from the day it is put on his table. Uh, we've begun counting the days when it was put on his table, and those 30 days elapse on Sunday. Right. Now, if he doesn't sign, two things can happen. The Speaker of Parliament can table the law before Parliament, and the law will automatically become law. Mm -hmm. uh, without necessarily the president assent to it. Mm -hmm. And the second? Uh, if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, right. the second one would be that MPs could just ignore this matter and wait for the president to take his time and sign this thing into law or revert to them with a position. Uh, normally what happens is the president will sign this bill and keep it under wraps and just keep it on his desk mm -hmm. and not announce to the public that he signed. Right. Uh, so, so either way, uh, this, this law, if parliament is, re is resolved in having it into an act of parliament, will become an act of parliament. Well, thank you so much, Nicholas. I do appreciate uh, the time taken to enlighten us on the legal matters surrounding the anti-gay bill in Uganda. We do appreciate that. That is the Secretary General for the Uganda Law Society uh, speaking to us about the anti-gay law. And also, Uganda happens to have passed the anti-pornography bill into law. That as well uh, could be a discussion for another day. But um, looking at the responses that are coming through, SVETS M1 is saying we are busy criminalizing gayism while we turn the other side when boys and girls are sexually assaulted with no action. And we're also having Teresia Nzisa who is saying gayism is not abnormality, it's time to get that clear. And uh, Themi Mitmas is saying well, I guess he's asking something totally different. But your teach Zef is saying homosexuality is a question of morality. Africa should stand by African values against the vice. And Michael Mina is saying, I'm gay and you can I'm gay, you can legislate all you want, but it's not going to change me. And that is one of the self-confessed people tweeting here. And uh, we also have another coming in from SVETS M1 again, who is saying, anti-gay laws, we have a lot of problems that need legislation and action than what people uh, should think about what happens in other people's bedrooms. Well, that is SVETS M1. Now, we're about to wind up the show, but before we do that, let's reconnect with Sean. Um, Sean, if you can hear me, uh, the Secretary General for the Uganda Law Society in Uganda uh, says that if the President doesn't sign the bill by Sunday, if he doesn't sign it into, into law by Sunday, then two things can happen. One is that Parliament will agree to actually pass it into law without the President uh, you know, having to assent to it because they have the authority to do that as lawmakers. But as we wind up, what is the perception of religious leaders at the moment in Uganda? And also, how are people dealing with the current uh, events or the twist of events at the moment in Uganda? Yesterday, I had a, a discussion with my close friends across one of the new malls at Akashia Avenue. And uh, the, the discussion was about how much they are paying attention to how far the president can go with this bill. One individual has expressed that the president is not going to sign this bill if he has taken this long without signing it. Clear enough, like Nicholas, it, or even as Amnesty International, Size mm -hmm. that if that is an app which is tomorrow, tomorrow is fine. I can count it very well. Many people are paying attention to I know then wait that if I go the president that's, uh, doesn't sign it automatically, I'm in too long. Relating to what my friends will say, someone mentioned and said that this is a really huge test for the president. And there's a possibility the president is going to question this law a lot more, mm -hmm. send it back to parliament mm -hmm. that bounces back in first around 2015, then he's give the majority their best gift before they, for him close to 16 by signing the bill. I then I would put and say that if the person doesn't sign this, if it's similar in a very compromising situation. Mm -hmm. To an extent that someone said, if someone wants best in terms of seven, get off. Yes. Let him advise you not to sign this bill, which is most likely. But do, do you think that, that do, Sean, do you think that there's, there's an issue of um, this being a political game because it has been reported that in Nigeria it seems to be a political game where President Goodluck Jonathan is just trying to, you know, get a number of Nigerians to support him for his next presidential campaign. Do you think there's some sort of political play that's being smelt in Uganda around this? 
And again, this morning, someone else brings up another example of space that you're going to be shocked mm -hmm. by how many political games that Ugandans are going to play before page 2016. That they're going to put in place certain things that are compromise people in office, mm -hmm. which is most likely to happen. And this is not going to save the president himself. So if you rule out politics out of how this deal was drafted, when it was brought about, its popularity in 2009, and then it's coming back at around this period and time. And we are just popping out of Japan's. At the same time, we have the minister bill, which many mm -hmm. of you must know about. It's not exactly a minister bill, that's what we call it here. Like everything here goes down to people that love you, yes. or people that would actually hate you. Mm -hmm. So if we can talk about politics, there is a lot of politics with the same. Great. Well, thank you so much. I can't go beyond this. Thank you so much, Sean, uh, for sharing your views with us. We've come to the end of the show. The uh, conversation continues online under the hashtag Africa Speaks, or you can visit our Twitter handle that is at KTN Africa Speaks at KTN Kenya, and my Twitter handle is at Joy Doreen Bira. Thank you all for uh, making time to contribute to this show, and also to our guests, the Secretary General for Uganda Law Society, that is Nicholas Op and the multimedia practitioner Sean Chimuli. Thank you both for contributing to the show as we talked about the anti-gay law or the anti-gay bill that is yet to be passed into law is yet to be signed. Now, we've come to the end of the show. Until next Saturday, thank you all for watching and God bless.